Hey guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I'm glad that you're able to join me today. And if you're new here, thank you for visiting. I hope you find my videos incredibly insightful and fun and something to occupy your time with at the very least. Um, today we're doing the sewing masks and I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't particularly ecstatic about making a video regarding the sewing masks just because there is so much information out on the web. Um, and there's good information and there's bad information and there's good advice and there's bad advice and I didn't want to be a part of the loop of hey everybody make the masks and then find out that they might not be used or you can donate them to somebody and they don't fit or there's a thousand and one reasons that that I wasn't comfortable in doing this and then word came down from the top that everybody should be wearing a, a mask, a fabric mask. Now the sewers, so sew, the sewing community is an awesome place when it comes to charity work and I absolutely love that because if there's a need that needs to be filled and a sewer can fill it, they're going to do it. And so now the fabric stores are just about empty. I, I, from what I've heard, there's not a whole lot of fabric or cotton quilting fabric left because there's sewers who are so dedicated to making masks that they've bought the stores out and elastic. By the time I decided that I was going to make masks just for my family, there was no elastic left. I've had I had a wait. I ordered I ordered elastic in the beginning of March, and I just got my elastic yesterday. So it's been over a month since I got a quarter inch elastic, and I only got and this right here is 70 yards of quarter inch elastic to make fabric, I meant to make masks with. And, and that's all I've got. Joann's didn't have any, Walmart didn't have, have any, I haven't gone to Hobby Lobby, but Hobby Lobby's now closed currently. So who knows what bleh, anymore, it's all crazy out there. So what I'm gonna show you today is, even though I'm not particularly happy about making the mask, the masks that I have made are just for my family and friends to protect them from people who are sick. And this isn't just for what we're going through now. This is for the flu. This is for the allergies. I live in the South where the pollen is horrific. The cars are covered in yellow. When it rains, you have streams of yellow. It's just the pollen is just awful and so I would probably use these every year just for my pollen or just for my allergies because I have allergies. My husband has allergies. My kids all have allergies and I know a thousand other people who have allergies and so at these, these masks are what I would make for them. Now if you're interested in making masks I will put some links down below to um, I know at least two websites that you can go to but if you just go to your local hospital's website I'm sure they have information there call customer service and then they can they can tell you what they accept not all hospitals accept the same stuff some hospitals want a specific mask made for specific reasons with a particular number of layers for filtration and some places are just like we'll take whatever you got so you need to call the facility if you want to make something for a facility call the facility and make sure you're doing it right because in the beginning people would just show up with masks and then the hospitals would have to just dispose of them and throw them away so all your hard work ended up getting wasted because it wasn't what they needed or what they wanted at the time so make sure you do your due diligence Make sure you're doing what the hospitals want you to do so that they get put to good use and not they're just not chunked in the landfill somewhere because even though you have good intentions, you don't want the work to go to waste. So what I'm showing you today is this. This is a, the fabric mask. It's called a surgical mask and it's just a two layers of fabric and I have muslin on the back and a print on the front so that way you know front from back so this is the part the muslin is what goes over your mouth it goes over your mouth in case you can't hear me I have a pocket here in the top for people who want to put a piece of wire in of some sort a pipe cleaner or something so that it can form over the nose and I kept the bottom open so that if anybody wants to add layers they can do so and I've heard of coffee filters I've heard of paper towels other 
pieces of fabric you, that you can layer in um, so that's that's an option there and then I just have ties here which is a straight grain uh, strip of fabric with, cut into a one inch strip that is sewn on and so these are the masks that I'm making so I'll show you it's not a tutorial precisely it's just my you're watching me make a whole bunch of them and you can follow along if you want I do give you the measurements for the pattern that I use and what I'm doing but like I said I wasn't all gung-ho about making masks there was so much information there was the information came out fabric masks aren't good they don't fil filter enough which is true they're not as good as the current disposables the N95 masks but they might help somebody and then it finally came down through the pike that most of the time the masks aren't necessarily for for keeping you from getting something from somebody else but it's more from you giving something to somebody else which is just as important especially when I come over with allergies and I'm sneezing and coughing and I've got a dry cough right now I don't have anything it's just all allergies it's all sinus drainage into my chest and it stinks but when I go out I use my mask so that I'm not hacking and coughing on other people as well which freaks out other people because they think I'm sick but I'm not but anyways so i'm going to show you how to make this mask make sure you do your due diligence to be able to make something for somebody else so these i recommend just for family and friends or anybody who might want them um, i've heard that people like them um, my husband in particular was he was the man in mind when i came up with the measurements and the ties for him because he likes it tying it around his head and he needs something big enough to cover his beard as well so I'm going to leave that right where it is with you guys so you follow along watch me and I'll do a voiceover as well going through the steps that I'm doing so it's just not you watching me which is what you're doing but also I'm explaining what I'm doing as I'm going along but this isn't a necessarily a tutorial tutorial that I normally do but in my next video I will be doing a cash wallet which is will be a tutorial tutorial because I'll be going step by step showing you what to do and we'll be dealing with zippers on that and so go watch the video and let me know what you think so you're seeing me serge the edges of the fabric that I purchase I do that for every single piece of fabric that I purchase before I cut it up and it keeps things from unraveling so when I throw everything into the washing machine and then into the dryer as everything gets tossed and turned the edges won't unravel and then there's not this great big old mess and then when everything is washed and dried I make sure to bring it out and iron it all so the way I do things is I wash it I dry it I iron it to the best of my ability and then I fold it up and put it in into storage so I have it when I need it and I always know that when I see the surged edges of the fabric that the fabric has been washed and dried at least once already sometimes you have to wash certain things multiple times because it'll shrink again this fabric is 100% cotton and it'll do that you'll need to wash it like twice before it'll stop shrinking So here I am showing you how I'm folding up the fabric. I'm showing you the selvage. This is the selvage right here. I'm showing you the selvage to be able to use that as a guide as to how I want everything folded up. I am folding it up this way because I found I will be able to cut more pieces out of the fabric this way than any other way that I normally have it folded up. And I can layer on top and get a good bit cut out before you know that way I don't have to like just fold it in half like you would do for a garment and cut out individuals if I can make the fabric piece as small as possible that still fits my pattern then I can cut out a whole bunch of layers at one time without having to rearrange and move and shift my fabric So this is me showing you the edge of the fabric. So if you have two folds there and the two cut edges, see they're surged, the two cut edges lined up there, then you folded it correctly. 
And so I'm lining up my fabric here to make sure the folds of my fabric line up to just below the cut edges of my fabric. So if my fabric was cut wonky, I'll still need to make sure that my folds line up to the shortest edge of the cut. My pattern is seven and a quarter inches tall and nine and a half inches wide. For each yard of fabric, I'm cutting out basically about two columns, which would be 16 pieces of fabric or 16, piece, 16 rectangles per yard of fabric, but it depends on how it was cut. If it was cut crookedly, I might get a little less. If it was cut straight, I might get a little more. Right now you're just going to see me cut out my cabillion pieces of fabric for the masks. You can see in the upper left hand corner I already, did, I already cut out all my muslin. So now it's just all the printed fabric that I have. So here you see me cutting out the strips for the ties that go around your head. Um, I bought three yards of Kona cotton fabric, which I believe is broadcloth. You find it in the quilting section over at Joann's. And for each yard, I ended up cutting just over 30 strips, which you need two strips for each mask. So it would be 15 masks per yard for the strips. So for three yards of fabric, I ended up getting about 45 masks with the ties to them. All the rest of the masks I'm making will have elastic. Since I don't have any more yardage to make ties with, I am cutting these strips to be an inch wide and I'm cutting the length so that it's the width of the fabric, which is 44 inches for these strips. tape fold even though this is a straight grain strip of fabric the way that I have my pins in my ironing board is the same way that you would do for bias tape so the tape is ironed so that the two sides fold in and then it'll be folded over the fabric when we sew all that together but this is just a quick and simple way to not only create the folded edges but to do it quickly so that I can go through my 90 however many strips, my cabillion strips that I had to make and get them folded and ironed down in such a way that they're easier to attach to the fabric masks when the time comes. And it's just super simple. You can see me in the reflection of the iron right here. I was talking to my sister as I was filming. Multitasking, three things at once. You can see here, I have my headphones on, I'm doing this in assembly line style, so I'm doing one step at a time, and I am using my cover stitch to cover the cut edges and to sew them down at the same time. 
So this is what the inside of the fabric looks like. The cover stitch covers the edges and sews them down at the same time. Really convenient. Usually it's used on knitwear, so anything that you make with knit, but man that was super easy for this fabric. So right now I'm showing you, I'm putting the wrong sides together so the cover stitch stitches are on the inside and I'm measuring using my thumb to mark where I would need to start the pocket and in the pocket for the wire that would go over your nose if you chose to wear your mask, wear your mask like that. I use my thumb because I know my thumb is two inches from tip to knuckle. So from my tip to my middle knuckle is an inch and from my knuckle to the knuckle on my hand is an inch. And so I use that. So the width of that pocket is four inches or around four inches. Like I said, I use my thumb so it's kind of a guesstimate. And I'm just sewing it down and it's about a half inch wide pocket so that you have something there to put a piece of wire in if you need it. You don't have to have it. I don't particularly like it, but there are some people who do. And so you see me pointing out the little pocket there. trying to figure out how I want to do the pleats. A lot of the instructions that I saw usually have three pleats, but I felt in doing this three pleats would be really bulky on the side and I didn't like it because I couldn't get three pleats to fit the way I wanted it. But two pleats ended up fitting perfectly. So once I got the two pleats placed where I wanted them, I used my fingers to um, finger press the pleats down so it would kind of hold its shape and then I would baste the pleats down so that they're all sewn together so they won't move and then I would just move on to the next pattern piece and do two pleats, finger press with my fingers if I could and baste those pleats down so that they won't move as I try to put the ties on. So here I am getting ready to put the ties on. So I am taking my tie and I'm marking the middle of it. I need to mark the middle so that I will have equal amount of tie on each side of the, of the mask. So I would normally do this in, like I said, assembly line, which means I do a bunch, a whole bunch, like 50 all at one time. So if I'm making 50 masks, I'm doing marking 50 ties all at once and I'm pleating 50 masks all at once. So right now I'm just doing these two so I'm marking the four ties and they're marked all in the middle so that I can have those set aside and ready to go. Now it's time for the mask so I'm going to fold the mask in half and I'm going to mark the middle of the mask so I can match up what I marked on the tie and then what's marked there on the edge of the mask. So here on that teal mask you'll see that I have a shorter layer of the muslin and the quilted layer or the printed cotton is taller. So when you lay your tie down you want to lay the tie so the edge meets the shorter layer. That way it'll guarantee when you turn the binding over to catch all the fabric it'll all catch. If you sew that tie on and you don't catch that lower layer there, the short layer, then your mask isn't going to be very secure because you're not going to have all the layers there. So I'm getting ready to 
find on sew on the ties here so I'm showing you right now the way I found this works for me is if I put a tie on the opposite side of each end that way the process goes a little smoothly and I'll show you further along how I can sew an edge and then flip it over and sew an edge that way my mask is always on the left hand side and I don't have to worry about struggling to push it to the left or push it to the right or it just being awkward so in the process of doing all this I have found just keeping it everything on the left hand side just makes it easier for me so right now I'm sewing down the tie right there just as a step so that I don't have to worry about the pins later when it comes to sew the ties on from the top and going straight down to the bottom of the tie so now that I'm done sewing the binding onto the mask itself, I'm folding it over so I can trim the edges. So trimming the edges allows me to make all the layers even as well as making sure that the layers are short enough that when I turn the strip over the edge to sew down the other side that everything is caught in the middle and that there isn't bulk because you got to trim that stuff down because if you don't you're going to get a bulky edge and then it makes it harder to sew over but you see how nice and neat and thin those edges are because I decided to use an inch wide strip that's how I get those narrow thin strips there this the narrow edges but I had to trim down all that extra bulk on the inside Now that I've got the strip of fabric sewn to the mask itself, I start at the top of the tie and I fold everything together, fold it in so the folded edges are facing one side and I just sew down that strip and that closes the tie up completely, sealing it, sealing it into a teeny weeny little tube. And then when it's time to get to the mask, I make sure that the folded edges is folded over the prior stitching and then I backstitch at the top of the mask and the bottom of the mask for strength but I'm always making sure that I'm going through all the layers of fabric for strength when I first started the assembly line I had everything facing to the right and it was uncomfortable it hurt my hands so then I swapped the, everything to the left so my bi my binding when you close it to sew everything shut it faces towards the right so that I can have I can be more comfortable as I'm sewing because you don't want awkwardness in your hands or anything that makes you uncomfortable because then you don't want to sew if it's uncomfortable and if it hurts so this is a really 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 zoomed in video of my needle and the um, ties so that you can see how I'm doing it and it looks like I'm weaving all over the place but in reality my folded edges because I ironed them kind of narrow on some places and a little wider in other places that when they folded over it was usually one of the folds were right down the middle but as long as it was securing everything and nothing would come undone that there were no gaps I left it as it was it wasn't a, a big deal but I always did go back and double check and make sure that all my stitching was secure so here at the top like I said at the top and the bottom of the mask I would do a couple of stitches and I would back stitch and then continue moving forward and I always did my best to stay on the edge of the binding because it would go through all the layers of fabric and secure everything and if I did it right I could bind through the top and the bottom at the same time and you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference it didn't always work out like that but I tried to do it that way whenever I could. keep on sewing all the way through the end so you start at the top of the tie sew straight down through the mask and all the way out to the other side and at the very end I always make sure that there are no gaps there are no holes all my threads are trimmed any loose little threads that come out with the tie because this fabric ravels a lot 
So anything that was loosey-goosey or ties or anything else, if I had a gap, I always went back to re-sew it to make sure everything was secure before I gave the masks to anybody. These are going to be washed and dried and you don't want anything falling apart in the washing process. Well, what did you guys think of the video? I know it wasn't precisely probably what you're thinking of, but I'm not going to go any further than that. Um, if you have any comments, put them down below. If you have any questions, put them down below and I'll certainly answer the questions as soon as I can, as soon as I get them. Um, remember, all my links are listed down below in the description box. If you have some, everything that I use regularly in my sewing room is listed down below. But if you see something that I use that's not listed down below, let me know and I'll see if I can find it for you. I appreciate everybody who watches my videos. And remember to like the videos, share the videos, share so that everybody can see the wonderful work that we do together. And I hope you guys are staying healthy, happy, and strong. And soon our quarantines will be over and we'll be able to get back to a kind of normal life. I'm actually looking forward to going out to eat and to getting my hair cut. Those are the two things that I want the most. A decent meal. Well, I mean, I do my own decent meals, but just going out to eat, having somebody else cook is awesome. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. You guys stay healthy and take care of yourselves.